Yes, sir. I can hear you good. Alhamdulillah. Salaam alaikum. Salaam, how you doing? Alhamdulillah. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good, thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's good to finally see you. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah, it is. It's been, it's, been, it's been a while since we've been um, speaking on Instagram. No, no, few no, years. No, no. Yes, um, sir. It's been a while. Yeah, back and forth on Instagram, keeping in touch, but never actually had a, had a face-to-face chat. Um, so, yeah, so it's really good to have you on. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So how's everything going there? I mean, uh, Tommy, you're in um, Houston at the moment. Yeah, yeah, real good, real good. Man. For they, they, they have an uh, all-female tournament, so I got two fighters out here fighting. Oh, is that, is that tonight? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule as yeah. well to, to do this. Um, yeah, I mean, as you know, we started, started a podcast and uh, get in touch with some of the guys that I've been following on Instagram and speaking to. And yeah, your name is definitely one of the first that came to mind. So, I mean, this interview, I just want to talk about yourself, your journey into boxing life before boxing, how things are going. Uh, so, I want to start from the beginning. Um, you know, be- before you came to boxing, uh, where, did you, where did you grow up? Uh, what was life oh, like before you started boxing? I grew up in uh, South Carolina, a spot called Charleston. Um, and basically, same with mother. But uh, my grandfather fought. My father fought professionally. My uncle okay. fought. Actually fought Major Taylor. And uh, oh, wow. so I was always just in the gym, boxing, and stuff like that. Always, my whole life. But um, yeah, single mother, raised up, typical, in the city, getting into trouble. You know what I'm saying? Mom mm-hmm. trying her best to make it work. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, running the street, getting in trouble. It actually derailed my career, pretty much. Um, okay. Yeah, so, you, so, you were box, so, so you were boxing before that as well, learning yeah, yeah, the yeah, boxing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, what, so what age would you sort of get into boxing? Oh, uh, ooh, from birth. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. you've always been around it then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uncle, uh, I just brought his kids, you know, so my father made us a good each other, you know what I'm saying? Grow yeah, yeah. raised up, so. Yeah. That's that's the way it's done, isn't it? Even even like my kids, they 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 spar their cousins. <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, way yeah. it is, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, so so when did you decide uh, that coaching was for you then? Uh, it was pretty much kind of crazy, like ironic. Like, I just, I just, I'm, I'm out of prison. I'm uh, uh, trying to find work. You know, living my life and. Uh, I was having to really fall upon the gym one day. And um walking to the gym, I'm like 30. The coach tried to talk me into like boxing again. Like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna look at the wall. He's like, yeah, you might you maybe could try it out. I'm like, nah, I'm not trying 30 years old. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm not even thinking about that, you know. Photos of Mark breathing on the wall, you know, Larry Hall, all the legends. I'm I'm telling him I know these guys. Mm-hmm. He's like, damn, you know, mom, yeah, I used to box, you know what I'm saying? So uh and he had opened it for a kids program, the youth box, and he is okay. helping the gym. Mm-hmm. So I go there, um, start getting with the kids. It was just so natural, because all I did my whole life was box. I boxed, mm-hmm. helped my little cousins, helped my little brother. I'm always, that's what it was, back in the ESPN, Friday night fights, you know what I'm saying? Like that was yeah, the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Prince Nassim, mm-hmm. Roy, you know, Pernell, Evander. All those guys, we would mm. see their moves, go home, practice them, study in big fights. So it was just like, I felt so much back at home. Like it wasn't, it wasn't working anymore. Mm. I'm there, I go to the gym all night, I'm happy. My wife told my mom, she'd be like, uh, he in that gym all day. My mom, my mom tell her like, leave him alone. You know what I'm that's what he does. Mm. Like, that's his, uh, when I'm training, I'm not working. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just getting paid to really do what I love to do naturally anyway. Which is, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, work, work with fighters, you know. So, so when you started, it was, was it volunteer, on a voluntary basis, unpaid, or was yeah, it course, straight, yeah, yeah. straight to pay? No, nah, volunteer. Okay. Volunteer. Volunteer. So, some of the older guys saw me. Like, I like I, I might have did the, the, the youth for like a day or two. Maybe the first night, this dude named Najee Lopez. Najee is pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think my night, like 5 and 0 pro, was real, real, real good prospect. Uh, he needed some mid work. So he threw me the mitts, I put them on, and I'm like, damn, <laughs> who is this dude, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, from there, it took off, you know what I'm saying? I've, 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 a, yeah. Sorry, I have a feeling some of the people that will hear this, 
uh, we'll listen to you talk about putting mitts on <laughs> so what's going on there <laughs> well i can I, I can i can hold mitts pretty good yeah. i just you know it's it just seems like it's just a over uh influence of it like that's all people do nowadays no more mitt, no more heavy bag barely see heavy bag work um mm. barely see shadow boxing barely see drills it's just like people bragging about i did 24 rounds of the mitts Mm. Some some world class guys that they, they brag about that. They say, well, how much doing heavy bag? There's probably none. They come in, um, dress out, and straight to the mitts. Put their hand wraps on, go to the mitts. Mm. I think that helps. That is a big uh, drawback on the decline of skills. I'm not yeah. saying mitts are wrong or bad. It's just um, you taking other things out yeah. just for mid work a lot of gyms a lot of fitness gyms that's all you see now people just do mitts and yeah. i get it for fitness but for fighters you must do other things with the mitts mm. other than the mitts you know what i'm saying that's yeah i mean I, I agree with you i think mitts is, is if you mitts is really for if you want to build a, a business at your boxing club because that's where yeah. the money is people want to come in um, and just punch the mitts uh, uh -huh. but yeah, if, if you're building fighters, it mitts just makes up a small part of the overall package. Yeah. Yeah. You can practice sequences on them. You know, I know yeah, you yeah. may want to counter a left hook, you know, use yeah. the mitts, do one yeah. thing over and over again. But yeah, that sort of 10, 15 punch combos, again, it's, it's more, you can make money out of it, basically. That's, that's, that's a business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, it's, and it's true, you can be in the business of boxing hmm. or the business of developing quality fighters. It's not the same thing. Exactly. Very different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I so, I me. Mean, who were your teachers or your mentors whilst you were starting out there as a coach? Uh, but in, um, Coach Lopez he just passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah. But I came Lopez. Um, he was. Um, I started coaching officially. He was. He was. He was the the owner, and the head coach of the gym. Okay. I would be there basically from opening the clothes. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, and of my father, my my oldest people have for my kid, but. Also, he, he he was the one who taught me, you know, a lot of you know, mm. drills and teach him like this. And it's funny that uh, he had a cane, so you would barely see him on the mitts. You know what I'm saying? And um, but he's hands down had some of the best fights in the country, without question, the amateur mm. fighters. And he would barely, if ever, get up off his cane even. Like I would watch him literally have his sons do. Drill upon drill upon drill. Go in the heavy bag and do this move and do this move. Boom, boom, turn, roll, boom, boom, on the heavy bag, mm -hmm. on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, and he, but he was an older guy as well. I started thinking like back in my upbringing, like, I didn't hit any mitts, probably mm -hmm. ever. I can't remember that. But I can throw any combination. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can do all of that, but I didn't let on the mitts. We just we had the shadow box. So, he was like a big, um, like a real big, like stuff or something, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Even yeah. when I, I decided to go to do my own thing, I'd always call him and talk to him. Even to the day now, like me, Andrew Council, he always called me, he always talk about boxing. Um, mm. Tom Yankello, those are my guys, we always, you know what I'm saying? We talk about, you yeah. know, different things, stuff like that. They give me points, give me advice. Yeah, Tom, Tom is definitely on my list to um, get on here yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, the other thing I want to discuss is you have a very distinct appearance. I mean, we immediately know you're a Muslim, uh, alhamdulillah. So what, what, I, what I'm very interested in is your journey to Islam. How did this all come about? Ah, uh, okay. Um, first of all, I absolutely love being a Muslim. It's the uh, most important thing in my life. I love it, and that's why I wear it. You know what I'm saying? I, I wear it. So outwardly, because because um, it was done for me. But um, like I said, typical. Um, raised up in the inner city in the hood. Um, my mother's a Christian, so was my father. Um, but I was always inclined to Muslims. The character, the, you know, what I'm saying, there's everything about it. You know, what I'm saying, and so um, the movie Malcolm X was a very, very, very good movie. Oh, yes very good movie. 
So I used to read. I like to read. Just that I read. I, I read all the time. If I go to New City, I'm gonna probably buy two things. I'm probably buy a bag <laughs> and I'll buy some books. I'm gonna go to the mm-hmm. bookstore and buy some books. I love to read. So I will, I, will, I bought the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yeah. And um, we would literally be in the neighborhood, and you know everything on neighborhood. People selling drugs, whatever. I would be reading. I love to read. Um, and that book kind of really, 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 really was hitting me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one of my neighbors was Muslim as well. And uh, we used to all week, we used to, we used to get busy. I just see him buy drugs, whatever. But Friday, he'll get clean and go pray. <laughs> be like, man, where you go? In the middle of the day on Friday. You know what I'm saying? Like, where you going at? You know what I'm saying? So he started going to Judah. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I'm like, yeah, what is that? So he, he bought me a Quran. And I would just read it, read it. Read it, read it. And I believed it. I always believed that it was the right way to do it. It my life. And I caught a real big uh, prison bid. And uh, I was on the news, on the run, and everything like that. Uh-huh. And so he was asking me before, like, man, when you when you gonna really like tighten up? And I used to say, man, I don't be, I don't be a fake Muslim. I don't want. I'm like, I don't want to be like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to. I don't want to do it and then still drink alcohol, uh, eat pork, fornicate. You don't always say like that'll make you fake Muslim. That'll make you fake. You're struggling Muslim, you know. But I kind of really did it. You know, I understand that. I kind of thought it was fake. You gotta be perfect to be Muslim. But uh, on the run, I, I knew then like it's over. You know what I'm saying? Um, I shot a guy. See so life support. So I'm thinking, you know, he may die or he just may 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 well live. So in my mind, like you know, uh, I'm done. I'm gonna. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, I'm just going to really, really, really go forward with this. I got caught a few weeks later. I took my shot while I was on the run. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, okay. Well, Allah help me. You know what I'm saying? Help me get a situation. And, you know, not only help me, help me get a situation, but help me, help me live the life I'm living now, a better life. I don't want to be this forever. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, um, so, what was your age at this point? I was 19. 19. Oh, wow. So, you're yeah. very young. Yeah, I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ended up doing um nine years. Okay. It was it's like I said, Slam changed my life. It was very, it's very. I just did Umrah last weekend. Yes, I saw the pictures on Instagram. Man. How was the experience? I mean, I haven't been myself yet. So, I mean, how was the experience for you? Speechless, almost. I still can't even almost like. like well, I'm from everybody calling my phone. Like, ain't no way you need that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We read about it, we talk about it. It is like you, 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 I was able, alhamdulillah, to perform Umrah and go to like yeah. touch the Kaaba. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you and I both know what it means to, you know what I'm saying, perform yeah. that. So it was, yeah. you know, right, right now I'm, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, it's when you go, you, all, your, all your sins forgiven. Mm. So it's like, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? It may be extra good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even left. You know, send me a lot of things and let me, you know what I'm saying? I mean, be yeah. there for before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, 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 I, f- I find these things fascinating. I think um, what people sometimes don't realize is that the discipline you gain from your daily prayers that yes, adds sir. up to success in the rest of your life. Because yes. when you can wake up, you know, for Fajr, like, you know, in, a, in the morning or 100, and you can pray, and then you can pray five times a day, you have that discipline. Yes. Everything yes. else falls into place. You can, you can. Everything yeah. else becomes disciplined for you as well. Right. And that, that, character. Yeah, yeah that, that's 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 what the. A lot of people will say, "Well, why do guys become Muslim in prison or like that?" You live such a such a such a undisciplined life. You know, do whatever, say whatever. I'm gonna answer to anyone because I'm my own man. But in Islam, there are rules. Like there are diet. It's not like okay. Um, I'm Christian, you know, Jesus died for my sins, I can do whatever. No offense to any one religion, I'm not trying to say that. Or uh, I'm a Jew or Buddhist, whatever. But in Islam, there are direct rules. Fajr, you have to pray. You should pray at these certain times. Certain things are illegal, you know what I'm saying? So it gives, it gives you discipline when you're undisciplined. Mm. It gives you, you know what I'm saying, like structure. It, it yeah. structure look like like Fajr, get up, perform Fajr, perform Wudu, and X, Y, Z. Like it gives you 
it gives you um like a military type of thing, a routine that like you have to yeah it, you know what I'm saying it, it gives you criteria mm -hmm. and, and I believe everyone should have criteria. We can't be lawless, but we just can do whatever we want to do. We want to do the world to be crazy. There were no rules, mm. so it gives you, you know, give you rules, right? So they, they do, I mean, they like they, they also like yeah. success habits. You build these habits, and then you start becoming successful because you're going through these disciplines. I mean, I myself wasn't very religious until just a couple of years back in COVID, my gym got locked down. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's when I started. Uh, but then all of a sudden, that's when my success happened because you started, yeah. you yeah, started you, being disciplined and it's right. just sort of built off the back uh, of it. It's, uh, like, it's, it's funny how it works out. I mean, I'm sure it's not no coincidence. Um, but yes, I just find it fascinating how people come to these decisions in life because it's a huge decision to make. Um, but right. but you know, we see what the, so how the whole, how your whole life outlook changes when you make these decisions. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on to, you spoke about briefly about your inspirations as boxing coaches. So what about as fighters then? Um, who's your biggest inspiration in boxing uh, for as a boxer? Which boxers do you sort of watch um, and, and inspired by? But you mentioned this, you've had with Roy Jones, Van der Holyfield. But yeah. what, what are, they your, are they your favorite boxers? No. Um, you know, I love the older guys. You know, you read about them, James Tony. They go to Ezra Charles, you know, Archie Moore, Henry Armstrong, you know, Sam Langford. So many guys that uh, probably aren't spoken of that much nowadays. Mm -hmm. But those are like um, some of my, like those are guys I try to, I read about their life outside yeah. of the ring as well. I teach mm -hmm. my fighters a character and, you know, what boxing really is, you know what I'm saying, what it represents for people, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, some of my, um, there's not very few, not not many now, but I'm more I think, I think that's because of the the, um, the culture nowadays of boxing, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I love the old timers. My favorite fight of all time, probably would say, um, Archie Moore. Archie Moore, okay. Yeah, he was he was a great boxer, and he's a great boxer for a long time. Um, long time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was still world champion in his forties, wasn't he? So yeah, yeah to do that. Yeah, you've, you've got to be his first world champion. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, are these um, your fair boxes you mentioned? Are they the same ones that you enjoy studying? Are they are they the same ones that you study? All of them have the have a similar style. You know what I'm saying they have differences here and there, but James Tony had a, a post. He, he said, uh, he said Archie Moore as a Jojo Walcott, and somebody said all four of them together is him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I think I, I, I think that was my post he put up on his Instagram. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Like um Sugar Robinson was the other one. Yeah, Ray Robinson. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I try to always like uh what made them so great. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and then try to go from there and try to teach my fighters, teach people in general that you know, this is the way, you know, they defend the jab, defend the right hand or you know, that's how they picked this. They were able to go 15, 20 rounds. You know what I'm saying? Trying to educate myself so I could teach. I got I got two sons. You know what I'm saying? So mm, I'm teach them that this is what the great ones did, you know, and we start from them. They are they are the uh they're the blueprint. You know, they're the footprint. We're gonna learn everything they did, how they did it, and then try to fix it, modify it here and there. But again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, mm. this was this what made those guys so great. Right so, so, you know. so when you say what made these guys so great, what do you think made those old school guys um so great as compared to today? Yeah. I mean there's there's lots of great boxers today, but I mean there's no sugar Robinsons, I don't think there will be another one or there's yeah. like Charles, those guys, Henry Armstrong. Yeah. So what made those guys stand out in your opinion? Was it the amount of fights they were having? You because to get better fighting, yeah, yeah. you've got to fight. This was not the yeah, the, the skill level, real real teaching of boxing. You know, top of that, the uh, the era to where like, you had to fight mm. to make money. Yeah, you read about Archie Moore having to fight and his whole check sent home to his, to his wife. He hadn't seen his family in so many months because he on the road just fighting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jack Johnson. So if if if, if you were to take a um, a Haney Shakur, you know what I'm saying, and put them in that era. Well, they already have the desire to be great. They, these young guys really, really, really want this right now. With all the millions there, they still want to be. They love boxing. 
and they put them in a city where they had to fight every month. They, they would be much better than they are now because of necessity. If you fight if you fight it for your life, they would fight it for some money. Look about Henry Armstrong fighting um, Sugar Sh- Sh- Ray Robinson. Yeah. Him saying, I don't want to fight Henry Armstrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But because he's like my idol almost. Yeah. But you know, you fighting him want to pay his bills. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So mm. different type of um mentality. Era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Floyd would probably still be fighting if he lived back in the days. Floyd mm. would have he would never retire because he wouldn't he would have had the money to what to he was able to retire. He's on my t shirt <laughs> coach. You know? you know <laughs> but he he wouldn't have he would have he would have he would have fought Terrence Crawford. He would have had to fight Errol Spence. No, no one beaten record. Because, though. <laughs> huh? No one beaten record in those eras, though. You fight so often, you're going to have a bad night where you're fighting you, four times course, a month. You're going to lose, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, he would have been fighting so much. And the more he fought, it would have been so sharp. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not a game because you had to. You're going to do this or you're going to be... A trash man, you're going to be a, a, a zero, especially as an African American in America back in the days. Mm. Boxing was one of the four black men could play in the NFL. This is before black men could play Major League Baseball. This is before black men could play in, in NBA basketball. So the biggest, baddest athlete was not in the NFL, mm. it was primarily in that boxing gym. This is one of the, you know what I'm saying? This was one of the if you are a physical, athletic guy, one of the top ways was to box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you would, it was like almost, not forced, but pretty much forced. Some forced to get out of slavery. So the whole idea of it was, was, was much different than, you know, get some views, you know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, we've heard the, um, I've heard the argument that the, uh, the Americans have lost their heavyweights to the NFL. You just mentioned the NFL. Oh, um, the That's best crazy. athletes are not going to box anymore, whereas before you know, they were. Now they're, they're going yes, more to the to the um, the basketball and the NFL. I agree. Okay, I mean, I was going to ask about your view and use of the mitts, but we sort of touched upon that already. Um, <laughs> so, so, so we're, we're kind of we're kind of skip that one. Um, so, I, I want to go on to um, your sort of. Uh, routine you sort of use for your pro boxes so you mentioned the old school so is your routine for your the guys you train whether amateur or pro is it in line more of the old school methods of skipping yes, sparring yes. heavy bag yes running I, that's, what, that's what i study a lot i try to find out what they did and then we try to do the same thing whereas even if, even if it's um conditioning mm-hmm. i met a guy in florida who had who has a ring in his gym and the ring is the same gym, the same ring that Chiray Robinson used. Oh, wow. I'm like, dang, y'all know we don't holler around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And um, he has some workout stuff that he said that his coach got from the coach of Ray Robinson. And I'm like, wow. So I always try to find out, you know, what did those guys do? You know? And um, try to put it in. What, 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 what I teach my guys always. always. So, when you're teaching your guys, you mean teaching them in a group. So, how, how are you breaking things down for them when you've got a group of guys, a, a pro boxer, for example? Um, but what sort of, what, I mean, how are you breaking down? You've got to teach a group of guys together. And you got and you see a lot of the old coaches, they're one to one coaching. They, they're not yeah. doing mitts, but they're doing, they're, they're taking them through specific movements. Just yes, watching sir. them shadow box. Is that the same way? You just get a group of them shadow boxing, watching yeah, yeah. them I, 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 all know, doing the my, same my, thing? Yeah, yeah, do the same thing. But I may say, okay, say Mac Chuck might do something that I might have gotten my, my sniper wouldn't do, or mm-hmm. vice versa. But because they their weight class, you know, their body shape is different, you know, say, say defend the jab, say, okay, okay, catching the jab, you do it this way. Or defend the right hand. I think you have any one time you have, you show where. Archie Moore was shoulder roll, but he shoulder roll as he's doing it. Step back and he shoulder roll instead of stepping backwards. Mm. So, but Florida stayed planning to do it, or Jim Tony would do it and not move at all. And I think it was when he, when he dropped uh, Rocky Marciano. When he did it, he stepped back and shot the right hand. Yeah. And uh, so, okay, Mac Truck, five foot 10, heavyweight. So I probably tell him, you don't step back. 
you know, you stay there and you probably maybe come in because you're fighting no big, tall guys and you go to the body. But a taller guy might tell you step back as you roll it right away and you come back with right hand, left hook. So it, it's the same base, but... but it's more nuances. I, yeah, you more, you modify yeah. it to you. You know what mm. I'm saying? But uh, that's how I do with my guys. I, and I hope that they all have... And, and this is something that's true. Cuss had a style mm. that a lot of his fighters fought out of. So, so same thing with Manuel Stewart. Same thing with Eddie Futch. Same thing with um Ray Arcel. You know what I'm saying? Like you could see, you could see all all their whole stable. Nacho Barrister, same thing. They had traits in their fighters. The left uppercut, Nacho. Most all this guy had the good left uppercut. You know what I'm saying? Um, the cross block shelling defense. You see some of those in George Benton guy. Most of the, probably all of them. Mm. You see some similarity. It don't mean that. They all are the same, but they have the same base. They have the same teaching, the same instruction. And then you are, uh, as you modify it to each individual, to their, their personality, their fight style. Yeah. Then maybe they could, they pace, conditioning. You know, some guys can, can go. Mm -hmm. Some guys can't go. No matter how much you train them, they don't have that type of um, high pace. And they can they can run like deer. They can do everything, but they I got two brothers in my gym. They bro, they do the same workouts. They two years apart. They do the same workout. One of them can throw a hundred shots around. The other one, fifty done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not so much a just training. No, they have different people are different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned about um, the coaches having the same sort of traits in their, in their boxes. I think Stephen Edwards, the bread man, was on, on my last um, podcast. And um, we talked about how coaches will almost sometimes, they'll prefer a specific type of body type even. If you look at the, the Kronk yeah. boxes, for example, yeah. Thomas Hearns, oh. McLennan, Mark uh -huh. Greeland, uh -huh. uh, Milton McCrory, uh -huh. all tall, lean boxes. Yes. Yes, uh, and that style was... You know, most successful with what they are what they are teaching. So it's, it's very interesting how you know even these um, great coaches, their styles are sometimes geared towards a particular type of. Um, and and I, I find guys now who who like I don't want to say wannabes, but they they swim brag and say you know all my guys are different 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 styles or who, who, but that's why you that's why why you have no quality fighter, you have no world champion because you don't really understand that. Okay, you are better at certain things. I know I'm better at certain things than, than other things. I know I love counter punching. Not many of my guys are on the front foot. You know, I know that about myself. You have to know that this is what my everybody knows. So you know what he's primarily does. You know what I'm saying? He make you squeeze somebody, but you know if he had to step something, it's defense. It's Canelo style, head movement, and body shots. Mm. That's what he's very good. He's not good at moving. It's not a flaw. It's, you know, it's a character trait that he's he's kind of like mastered. Like Emmanuel with the talk. He know what he's good at. Mm. You know what I mean? He can't change the train miles, but he know what his bread and butter is, is Tommy Harris. It's Lennox Lewis, Klitschko, it's Fury, Bill McCrory, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Jerry McClellan, tall. Slim, good jab, good right hand. That's what his step was. It wasn't. It wasn't. He wasn't a defensive guru. Not knocking man Stewart. That wasn't his forte, like a George Benton, maybe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. No one. No one. No one has the whole every hundred percent. You can't. Yeah, I mean, your you, specialty is certain things. Exactly. You've got to have your style, and you've, you've got to put that stamp you know, onto your style. Yeah, um, what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. The, I mean, we've, we've spoken a lot on Instagram uh, about the similarities between the Michigan um, style of fighting, Detroit style of fighting with, with Philadelphia, um, with yes. the Philly shell and the, uh, the, Mich the yes. Detroit rock, or whatever, whatever they may call it. Uh, yes. So, yeah, so Emmanuel Stewart's style was the more aggressive form of yes. the shoulder roll, yeah. as, as was guys like um, Sugar yeah. Robinson, the more aggressive yeah. form of shoulder roll, whereas yeah. Philadelphia style, George Bent was a more defensive oh, counter punching yeah, style. Yeah. Yeah, Both yeah. all time greats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Both, both, both worked. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, going back to your Instagram, when I first started following you, you're on about, you're on about eleven thousand followers. 
and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it blew up. I mean, Crazy. when did when did you see what was going on, and uh, how did it hit at, you? Up? At, at going first, on I did it. I did it. I didn't know uh, what it meant. I just people all the time, man, post videos talking about talking about that. Never seen before. I'm like, yeah, man, you can go up with this. So I'm like, okay, I just started doing it. I train. I think of think of some teach somebody, and they put your phone out. You know. They pull their phone out, boom, we go. I post it. It'll probably chop for now. I'm probably way better than I was back then. But I was just just letting them run. It was just mm-hmm. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I, I I I think it's because people weren't putting up that style anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like boxing is it, it almost like evolved. Like like it changed. So like even with the hand being down. No one is like stuff is crazy. So the critics like. That trash don't work. But some guys like, yeah, I like that. You know what I'm saying? The fighters like, ah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it resonated something within them. So it just, it just started, man, like, ooh. And I'm like, this still I was, it's like coming to me. Like, okay, right hand coming and you turn this way. Like, I was learning that as a baby. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Left foot coming, you turn it, boom, back to your left foot. Like, I was taught that I, I was, Nine, ten years old, like this is this is what I would do. So I'm posting it like it's a regular thing, but people are like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And I'm getting my fathers going crazy. So I really was like, I just and I love to do it. Like I don't mind getting it away. People might say, well, why? It's like just because somebody see it is done on YouTube or Instagram doesn't mean they can go do it in the ring. It's a big difference between someone. Nine to about ten people cannot do something they see on camera. They have to practice it over and over and over. Mm. I always tell my guys that okay, they might I got guys coming to them and look at my truck spar, right? Look at my truck trains, they they didn't come in the connector. I'm like, don't do that, don't, don't, don't do that. Because you don't know how many times we've done that in the spar and it didn't work. Mm. You see? I'm fussing, not truck, trust the move. Trust the move, trust the move, try it. And then all of a sudden, now he gets it. Now you're gonna go in there and do it first time and get caught. And you're gonna be a shell of yourself now. Now you're gonna doubt the whole everything. So it's like, just because somebody sees someone on, on, on social media doesn't mean that you're giving away free game. They're giving a little bit of game, but that don't mean they're gonna be able to go in that ring and yeah. apply. Yeah, and, you know, the big and difference. also yeah, and also sort of yeah, I mean uh, I've done hundreds of like so many breakdowns and and I know a lot of things people say me, you know doing it for free but i know 90 9900 people are not going to take any advice from the video anyway they're going to watch it and that's the end of it one so minute you, one yeah i like that click that's it exactly the few people will act on the advice you give them so that's why you can give it give it away for free yeah, uh, yeah. the ones who want it you know they'll do it as you mentioned they'll go yeah, practice it re- repeatedly but yeah you don't have to you don't have to worry about it just give yeah no that's that's what you do about it isn't it yeah, yeah. exactly yeah um, so you mentioned Mac Truck as well. He's he's sort of the fighter you're sort of most um, known for as well. You two being a sort of a partnership. Um, I mean, how, how did that partnership come about then? Oh man! So I saw him sparring my 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 fighter who was the very good guy, the heavyweight, and um and and he would come and they would get the best of Mac Truck. They would beat him up, but like he just wouldn't quit. Mac would be bloody and everything. He's the nice, quiet little, 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 little joker, man. And he just wouldn't quit. So I liked him. Like, I like him, you know. And you know he's short and he's heavy, and uh, Mac is real high weight, you know. So you know, out of my mind, like, uh, he ain't no, he ain't, he ain't no cruiserweight. You know what I'm saying? He's just a big guy, just short. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I liked him. So a coach would say, "We well, just need to get in shape. We need to just uh, get him to lose seventy five pounds." I'm like seventy five pounds. <laughs> That's a that's, lot of weight, you know. Lot, yeah. To still expect him to be the fighter he is, I don't mm. think that. I'm thinking you just teach him the short man style. Mm. Let him study Joe Frazier. Let him study Rocky Marciano. Let him study Joe Muhammad Kabi. Let him study Hal Rock Green. Let him study Benny Briscoe. Let him study, you know, what I'm saying David Tua, I got be a Bucci, um, Ruiz. Let him th- a little bit of Tyson. Let him learn. Like it is what it is. He's five mm. foot ten, right? The average middleweight is six foot tall. So you're short even for a middleweight. Mm-hmm. For like, hey, well, you're still going to be a shorter guy. For a cruiserweight, you're still the shorter guy. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being short. 
know what I'm saying? It just, Jay Tony was not a tall guy. Fight short. Carl Fred was a short physical class. Fred had a very good career. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I start liking him. I'm, that was my mentality. And so one day, my number Jay asked me to start training him. And I was like, man, you know, I was one to train you from the beginning anyway. I was one to train you. I didn't want to step on nobody else's toes. So we started working. I would tell him, like, uh, you know, we're going to do this and that. He kind of like, man, Kobe Mustafa crazy. Like, man, you're going to be, I'm, I, I'm making you a superstar. Like, you're going to be a good fighter. You know what I'm saying? Just keep doing what you're doing. And um, he just believed, man. He just, he would just do the drill. He'd be work, 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 work. Hours upon hours. Work, work, work. He, and Mack Truck is a hard worker. People look at the weight. That doesn't mean anything. I go to Mac, I to Mac 5 a.m. in the track. He gonna be there 5 a.m. Like he dedicated to boxing. That's how we we really got good. He show up. We stay all day long. Never had a job. Just me and him working. This like five years in. You know what I'm saying? And he, he came from the laughing stock. You know what I'm saying? To you know a real quality fighter. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying just from uh, you know. Showing up, working hard, purely skills, watching, watching those old time fighters and um doing it. Like mm. and it becomes like like we spot Du Bois a couple few months ago. Okay, yeah. And you can see boy. from the from the door, it's like, ah, you know, who this fat boy? <laughs> he ain't no heavyweight, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And then it's like, oh wow, he, he can fight. You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of boxing now, it's like, it's the build. If you have a certain build, a certain frame, a certain arm, 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 arm reach, the coaches may just overlook you. Like you just do some boxing fitness. But this guy, who's a who's a who's a um, a straight brute, a straight, rah, we want to give him that. All I think that's what I'm doing all the time. I got guys who come to the gym and they can punch, and they got the six pack. Chips and chess, everything they can punch, and they they look and they can probably be able to race. It's like, why coach messing with Metro? He ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm the. I mean, that that's not what it takes to be a quality fighter. It could take a whole lot more than your physical makeup. You know what I'm saying? He have all those other things that makes a quality fighter. You don't have to have the. Say, say, say you need 10 things. Say I say I say 10 things make a quality of a, a world class fight. Say you only have one that he doesn't have. And then it doesn't tell you anyway, having a phenomenal body and you know what I'm saying? No, no. There's a lot of so a few um short all-time great fighters. Mm. There's been a few. That's why I, I, I always push him to be that, to try to. Yeah. Like, that's your goal. You know, your goal is not Fury or or um Joshua or Wilder. No, 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 no. The goal is that when they mention the short guys, they put you in the same conversation mm -hmm. with, and that's what any fight, that, man, of course, my goal, my goal is that they can put me in that type of conversation with those legends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah. Like dream big, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. work, work, work yeah, exactly. Hard, do your very absolute best. And um, that's what, me, that doesn't make Floyd who he was. Floyd had desire to be great. Mm -hmm. On top of the training, he had desire. Because his father had other, other fighters as well. What made him that was his desire that I'm like Ray Leonard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like Ray Robinson. I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm that type of fighter. And that, that matters to have that type of desire. You, know? you have to. You have to believe in yourself. You, you know, you've, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to take risks. And you know, you've only got one life. You, you can't just sit being comfortable. You're not going to grow. Um, you yeah. know. I mean, if you didn't come on Instagram, for example, how different would your life be? You, you decided to put yourself out there. You decided to put your teachers out yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes, sometimes through a scrutiny of other coaches, you know, I've, I've yeah. seen back and forth between coaches. I remember the uh, the sparring oh, yeah. session. I remember the sparring session caused a, a big a big storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and, you've got to you've, you've, you've got to have that sort of thick skin as well don't you when you're putting yourself out yeah, there yeah. You know, to handle i mean how do you handle the sort of criticism or you know, the comments uh, that come? i just ignore I, anything these sort well, of comments if, if, how do you if, handle if, it if it's, if it's respectful I, I probably respond and we go back and forth mm -hmm. um when it gets disrespectful, i take it off like you got a skirt on or blah 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 i, I delete those but regular just like boxing um stuff it's okay 
because I want people to know also that I'm never saying that my way is the right way. I'm never saying that I know everything or whatever. I'm not. I'm just saying this is the way I see it. Mm-hmm. People say, man, how anybody follow you? Like, AJ follow me, you know, okay, like a big guy. Like, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we just align with thoughts. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, I can't pay him to follow me. <laughs> I'm saying, this man's a multi it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's just maybe you see something. Maybe you get a glimpse or whatever. Like, it just the way I see it. Like I said, if you put Eddie Fudge and Manny Stewart side by side, they probably have a lot of differences. Plenty of them. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that one is wrong. Me and Real may talk about something and he may see it this way. I may see it that way. It doesn't mean we are wrong. Because that very male, very well may work. You know, types of this stuff that Holyfield didn't do. Those are those are two multi-million male, great legendary Hall of Fame fighters. So I don't I don't mind criticism. Um, but some a lot of it is just pure hate. Yeah. Because okay, who is he? He ain't all that. But I never said I was all that. I'm just doing my best to teach boxing the way I see, it, you know, and the way you see is not wrong. Yeah, I wish you the best. You know what I'm saying? But to me, I think, okay, let's get off the line this way. Do the lean. Oh, that, oh, that, that trash don't work. Okay, well, you know. Don't if you don't think it works, don't do it for yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, you know, I'm not knocking what you're doing. I'm saying for me, people that try to learn what I think or what I feel or say, then do it. Those who don't, it's fine. Yeah. It's more than one way. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm as you know, I'm from I'm from Watford in the um, in the UK, and predominantly the style which I study is the Michigan or Philadelphia style. Because just for just for my studies, I mean, I've studied so many boxers. To me, that seems to be the. As you said, there's no right, you know, number one. There's no one way. There's lots of ways. But for me, that seems to be the best way and the most successful way. Um, it's just it's just what I've come to from you know from studying these guys. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's the sort of teaching that I'd want to teach my guys, uh, couldn't they? Because you always try and look for what you believe is the best. Um, but that doesn't mean to say um, that the Eastern European style, which is very successful no. now, doesn't mean to say it's bad. Or the no. Cuban style, they're all great as well. But you choose yeah, your yeah, style, exactly. you believe in it, and you, you press on with it. Yeah, pros and cons to it. Yeah. You know, one time we were sparring a guy, the guy's pretty good, and uh, Mac had his hand down. And Mac would jab, bring it here. So the guy said, um, Mac truck, keep your hand up. So I said, I want him to keep it down. So he's mm-hmm. like, what? I'm like, yeah, I want him to keep the hand down. So I'm like, Mac truck, keep the hand down. And he like, uh, well, he threw his guy real loud. When he threw the jab, throw the right hand. And it's like, we be verbal, real loud in the jab. He just like, gave the game away right. though, didn't he? Just gave the yeah, game yeah, away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do what you do. And he never landed on the right hand. You know what I'm saying? And so like, uh, you know, like, and he was like, man, he keep doing that old school. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I'm not knocking what you do. You, you are a very good coach. I respect you. You're successful. But from what I've been studying, I've been reading, I've been talking to other coaches and, you know, dialoguing. This is what we do. This is what I think is best. And it works. And every now and then, I had a guy send me a video one time, him went this with, with, with Manuel Stewart. And he's, he, I never posted, he told me never posted, but he would show me three ways he would work with Emmanuel Stewart throwing a jab and to defend the right hand coming behind the jab. And now once he do this, you see? So I was like, I'm talking like, ah, I'm on to something. You know what I'm saying? You know, those guys are dead and gone. We can learn from them by their fighters. Mm, George exactly. Benton is gone, but we can learn. So look at say, okay, all George Benton guys, a lot of them did this. Then this must be something they were taught to do. Mm. Look at the Holy, Holyfield for James Tony. Of every Tony right hand, Holyfield would ride it and throw his right uppercut. And I was like, man. So you start thinking that was John Bill told out his guys. Even though he was gone, even though Holyfield was with, with, with Don Turner at that time, he still had it ingrained in him off the right hand, throw the right uppercut. Mm. And I would tell Metro stuff like, and my guys like, I fight die the day in heaven with me. I hope that I've showed you how to fight. 
I hope that you remember these things that this, this stuff works. I've done this stuff so many hours upon hours upon hours that I know what to do in any scenario. How to defend left up right here. You know, how to how to how to use my feet in the rain, how to smother, how to preserve it. Like I like to teach, like you said, the boxing business or the business of you know teaching people self-defense, how to go in there and, 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 and survive any storm. I can say, well, uh, Metro, go get him. I don't care who it is. You know how to defend a right hand. I don't care how big the muscles are, how long they are, how long their arms are. I, I get mad when he get hit. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, man, this is what we do. Like, yeah, the way thing, whatever. I stress to you the defense. I pride myself on we go, we're going to do the drill, we're going to do 80% of our training is defense. Because we know the, the, the bad effects of boxing. Mm -hmm. We know the brain damage. Mm -hmm. We know that stuff, and that stuff is, is real. I have met so many great fighters, and I always talk to them slowly with my full respect. And you can visibly see the effects of boxing. So I'm like, man, we don't get hit like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care we the strongest puncher, we got the fastest hands. Man, you better move your head, man. <laughs> like, that's what yeah. you're stress. You know yeah, saying? move your head or move your feet. You gotta do that. Uh, yeah, George, Be George Benton said it. Finesse is what a boxer does before and after he throws a punch. So yes, yes that was. And, and again, you mentioned um, Holyfield riding that right hand comeback right uppercut. Yes, who, who was who was Holyfield originally taught by George Benton? Who is did that? George Benton study under Eddie Fudge? What was Eddie Fudge's favorite counter to the right hand? Oh, the, the turn of right uppercut. So yeah. it's like it's like it's like. We say, well, what, what, what school you come from? You know what I'm saying? People say, well, you know, that's what it is. That's like a, they're gone, but there's so many remnants in, you know what I'm saying? Mm. They say, well, uh, exactly. you know what I'm saying? He had to go, he, he had to have a study up under that system or that style, and, and he just likes it. Yeah. He believes in it. You know? Exactly. So, so, so what is the day in the life of a boxing coach for you? What's your average day entail? Ooh. We're in the gym probably from, probably, I'm in the gym from like eight or seven in the morning till nine, 10 o'clock at night. Wow. Um, how, how many days a week are you doing that? At least five. At least Monday five. Monday to Friday. Yeah, I do stuff on the weekends as well. I do my, my personal sessions in and um, mm. some of my boxing, fitness, or some of my fighters who couldn't come down the week because I was so busy, busy during the week. I yeah. tell them, come on the weekend and we'll get some work in one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Uh, so you are doing both then? You are doing both boxing as a business and boxing yeah. and teaching the fighters. But it's um that's my right now. Yeah, what what's what's my cash? That's that that's my thing. Is I'm so much of building fighters. You know what I'm saying? I got to work on boxing building. I got a new bigger building, bigger gym. Um, bills got to be paid. Exactly. So I have to, I have to get better at the bits of boxing. But I that's so, the mitts. Is that the mitts for the um the business? The mitts, the, <laughs> the foolishness. But I, I I get so immense in. Uh, the teaching fighters, like my girl Brooke. So she lives in Pennsylvania. I live in Atlanta. So we do Zoom class all the time. So we had a tournament. I was like, nah, I love boxing. You know, I, Mitt eh, okay. I love the the idea of I'm teaching you something. We're about to go in tomorrow and we're going to pull this stuff off. We're going to win. We're going to look the best. I'm like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I get to, so I'll stay in the tournament. Like I'll, I'll run every weekend on the road, but I probably should be at home, um, running the business, making sure it's ran right. But I love the boxing part. Somebody yeah. called me and said, I got a fight coming up, would you come? I'm coming. I love the sit down and me and this other guy, and we almost, you know what I'm saying? Like we almost like we battling. I'm trying to outwit him. Mm. With my fighter, like I'm a, I'm a, I got control of my hand, and the fighter is, the, you know what I'm saying, it's the game. Yeah, and, I you mean, know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, I've got a pro fighter as well. You know, and I was, I was other guys that um, they come in amateur, and it's like you said, you get your biggest buzz when they're fighting because that's yes. where you see your work. And yes, you see, and you see your impact on, yes. on these guys. That, so that that, that is the biggest buzz. Yeah, it is. They're way more than the money. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. My work, my, my work meant something. 
Like I taught him this. Mm. He believed it. He trusted it. He performed it. Yeah. Like it's like the most gratifying thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you see those moves come off, which you jawed in, you know, in the in the gym, you see it come off. Like you watch it over and over again on your phone. Yeah. You see that movie, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you mentioned like the um, the training of the pro fighters, the Zoom as well. So what, once your name started getting out there and you started um, getting in touch with the you know, famous fighters who were coming to you, I've seen you work with Javonta Davis. Um, I think you also like James the Beast Wilson down there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure other names as well. So when you started becoming known, how did you then pick who to train because you're inevitably going to get a lot of guys that are going to say i'm going to be the next champion you want to coach me how, yeah. how do you differentiate between oh, i'm going to pick this person i'm not going to go with this person yeah. do, you, do you spot is it red flags do you see or it's just a hunch what is it it's uh the red flag is not training not because not being consistent and not want to learn like, i got guys in my job all the time and when they stop learning it's almost like you know we we're gonna train, but I really can't get too too invested, too too motivated because you got, this is a knowledge based thing. Mm. You know, if you can you can you can you can you can be a dog. You can have a good chin. You can have a lot of heart. You can have um, a lot of power. If you can't like listen to understand, this, you're gonna get hurt probably in sparring. You're gonna end up quitting because this. Sparring over here in America, like the fight is rough. Yeah, I've it's, heard some it's, stories. <laughs> it's tough. Like I can't, I can't, I can't take. Man, you rip your head off, man. Like, yeah, I'm listen. To what I'm trying to teach you, man. Keep your chin down. When this move come, do this. If you don't, this guy is throwing the right hand with all of his power. Like he's not pulling back. Mm. You need to listen to me. If you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Like those are the big red flags. Like. Um, but, but how would you uh, like, it, so I mean on the Instagram you become well known people want to want to train you what people want you to want you to coach them how do you pick who's who's worth your time or not before you know, just sort of based on maybe a session or two uh, it's hard to that's, 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 very, that's very hard to I need so to what do you do then do, you, do, do, do they do you keep them on for more or yeah, yeah you keep them on let, how let, long is a trial let, let, let them see let them see how much they work I got a guy in my, a lot of people might think like, um, I'm too busy for them. But I'm almost like, I'm, 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 I'm kind of seeing how serious they are. So everyone come and they talk, everyone say the same thing. They see I'm popping, I'm jumping, you know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like, ah, you know, but I got to see if, if, if you have the quality that it takes. I got a guy much better than big guy, he can punch, he's strong. I said, well, train with Mac Trump. Do what he does. I'm almost like kind of like um testing him. You know, you're both heavyweights. You can have the, a very similar style. Mac Trump knows what I do. He knows how I like how what I agree with being done and move on. Train with him, run with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, watch film with him. These things you have to do, you know. Um, on the weekends, you, what's, what's your job schedule? Come here Sunday, we'll watch two James Tony fights. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't do it, it's like, okay, well, maybe, maybe boxing is just um, not that important. For me, it's very important. Mm. I have, a, aside of my religion and my family, my next goal is to become a world-class Hall of Fame coach. That's what I want to do. Mm. So maybe you don't want to be a world-class fan. That's fine. But I'm, if they don't know, I give, them a, I give them some time to figure it out because that takes time. I got a guy in my gym now. And he done phenomenal in two years. Um, three amateur fights, turn pro, is doing his thing as a pro. Has sparred multiple quality guys, have held his own. Now, I'm trying to tell him, you've held your own against prospects, top prospects. It's going to take a little bit more to, to beat those prospects, to dominate them, lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um, Work ethic. I can teach you all the skills all day. You have to put in the work, like the abs, you know, the squats, the running, the doing what, don't put my back and cheat. No, you can't do it like that. Not to be, you know, a quality fighter. So yeah. I kind of let everybody, you know, I, I let I let them more. Or less. They tell me what they really want to do, what it, what they actually. Do. 
you know. Yeah. But pretty soon that's gonna be done with soon because I'm getting a lot of real this nice nice calls. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be like you know, I probably got three or four I take maybe for my gym, but I'm working with you know qualified as that. One yeah. So when you mentioned these guys got to have those qualities, what were those qualities you're specifically looking for? Desire, like a real passion to do this because it's gonna be hard. Mm. Um, if something come rough, you can't fall apart automatically. This, this is what it is. Um, willingness to learn. That's that's like one of my biggest thing is, you know, if, if I can, if you can't learn, I really can't train you. Mm. I can't teach you anything because I just, I just, I, I, I just, it just don't get me. Like, you have to be able to how to do certain things, how to set the left hook up, how to, you can't hit kill him no trash. Like these are, if you're trying to be a quality fighter, a guy come in there and say, he got a good punch. You will never hit killer pet with that. Just because you hit hard, I get a guy come in there and they say they can hit Mac truck because they big all the time. I'm like, man, that's trash, you gonna hit him, man. You would have to have some, a setup. You get to have some pace, you have to have some, some, something crafty to catch to be a quality guy you have to have a little bit of crafty mm. you cannot just go you know um so being able to learn that's the one of the biggest things yeah being able to learn um really wanting to be great um a good work ethic those are being like being listening being respectful you know what i'm saying um without without without, without good character you ain't gonna be able to because you're gonna say uh Bump coach, you know what I'm saying? Whenever coach, if you're upset with coach or whatever, whatever. Instead of you got character, that's my coach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I respect my coach. You know, I trust my coach. I'm listening to my coach. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. When it comes to like those, are some of the biggest things having having a chin, you know. Um, but I personally believe that somebody got a good chin, they still could be a quality fighter. Yeah, you know, they may not be a a world class beater, but you can work around anything, anything physically. Mm. Paulie Malinaji was not the biggest puncher. Mm. Was not the fastest guy. Was not the tallest, leanest guy. To look like some Madonna. I'm a real fan of Paulie Malinaji. He was a very, very, very good fighter. Yeah, won yeah. world titles, and made millions of dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's nothing physical. It's more or less, you know. Um, He's very smart. He's a very smart fighter as well. And you can see now when he commentates how smart he is as well. So that mind in the ring, you know, yeah, he's a very smart fighter as well. Those are the big things, you know what I'm saying? Um, Desire. What is it? it Learn and show every day. They can do that, then we can do something. I can can begin to. Like I said, I got a guy that two years and we did phenomenal. It don't take a whole long time. Just stay in the gym, be willing to lock in, you know, listen, let somebody teach you. And that's how you can, you know, the rest on you. Mm. You know, yeah, it's, it's the hardest sport in the world. You you can't you can't slack at all when you're fighting. Um, nah, you people, yes, yeah, you, you mentioned as well you're trying things um, in in the in the in the ring and sparring after watching YouTube videos. Doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. <laughs> things happen too fast. <laughs> too fast. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you're in for a yeah, rude awakening if you. Uh, it takes <laughs> hours and hours of, you know. And it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting because you know, as a boxer, you've been maybe boxing a year and a half, two years. You know, just as many punches or punch combinations generally as a world class champion. Yes. But they draw it in again, 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 yeah, day after day. Do it. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a sport of repetition as well, isn't it? Um, okay, so what are your plans now for the future then? Um, I want to stay in Atlanta. Okay. I, I got a real like a uh, desire to make Atlanta like a real, real hot bed. Atlanta got quality fighters, but probably recruit some guys to come. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Not recruit them, but invite them that you want. You know what I'm saying? If you mm. want to, uh, you know, some, some, to improve as a boxer, your defense, your footwork, your basics. Thing that I think makes a quality fighter, you know, we cut my gym. Um, I'm gonna hire some guys to do my, my amateur fighters. Just take three or four serious guys, do my camps with stuff like that. You know, I always look at 
Robert Garcia, you know, Derek Jane, guys who, how do, how do they manage four or five quality fighters and have enough time and energy to prepare them for top quality fights? And it's kind of like, you know, uh, copy them a little bit, modify it, make it to fit myself. But um, I always talk about the crunk gym. Yeah. And, 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 uh, aura, or, you know what I'm saying? That type of, that type of energy where, you know, mm. it's, I was coming to an RBG real boxing gym, you know, and it's, uh, it's, everything's tough in there. The workouts are tough. Mm. Uh, the sparring is tough because that's what it takes to do something that we know is the hardest sport in the world, you know, that you have to have that kind of resiliency and toughness to do it. And, uh, you know, I got plans, you know, Mack Truck to be, you know, yeah. every shape of the world. So you're looking like, to build, build your stable, build your sort of brand. Yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned yeah. the um, the the Krong gym. The Krong gym was was very well known for its sparring yeah. and the intensity yes. of sparring sessions. Is that something which you believe in as well? I mean, I personally, like me, is it for me? You know, the proof is there when you train your guys; they get most out of hard sparring. The trick is how much hard sparring, I suppose. That's, but it, ha- that's, it has that's to be yeah. it has to be hard sparring. You just have to um, yeah, replicate yeah. what Push you're going to see. Man, man, other guys come to my gym and they, we, we we may have sparred two years ago. And and now we spar today is night is just night and day. And a lot of it is my teaching, but it's also the sparring, also the 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 um type of energy. Like if my fighters don't do what I ask, I leave them alone. Mm. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna push you to the break. If you smoke weed, just I'm not gonna get no energy. I'm just gonna ignore you. Like I'll probably get out. <laughs> like. We're not doing this. Yes, this, I want to help the youth. That, it's not a boys and girls club. No, 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 no. We have to do certain things. And they are the same because the coach allows it. And the guy do four rounds, say, I'm tired, the coach let him out the way. No, if you're tired, then go fight while you're tired. Mm-hmm. Learn how to fight while you're tired. Learn how to clinch. Lay on the ropes, rope a dope, show the road, do what you got to do because you can't. What happens is this, now you're in a real fight and the first glimpse of fatigue, you want out. Because you're not forced to really, really, really look with that, calm down, take deep breath and figure it out. If you hit with a good, a good punch, you fall apart. Because you're not taught to, okay, bite down, suck it up, clinch. How to fight when you're tired? How to fight when you're hurt? How to fight when you get somebody hurt? You might get my hurt that you go blow, you go crazy, and he walk you into something big and knock you out. Like you only get these things from in the in the rain. You could talk about it all day. Yeah. You could talk, you could remind, 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 but you have to put them in those situations. Like Metro he lost his last fight. In my opinion, that was the biggest thing for his career. Because Mac is not a big, he isn't a big puncher. He ain't no wilder. He isn't that what it is. He's a decent puncher. But and what makes him is his defense. Matt Truck is a, you know, he if he don't want to hit you, probably will hit him. He, he's he's a he that type of James Toy Archie type of guy. He got good defense. But he started getting them knockouts. You see? And we know what that does. Yeah. You see? We know what that does. So no matter what I'm telling him, you know, when there's box and do what you do, it's the friends, it's the homeboys, it's the fans, it's the comment, the comments on Instagram, it's the girls. It's the people make a a a, 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 a make a, a, a video on YouTube and say he's the next Mike Tyson, you mm-hmm. see. And now he believed that, and now all he want to do is knock people out. Yeah. And you forget that. Hey, oh, you pugilist. You, you are a pure boxer. And so you know, when you fight, it's like those things. You know, words words stick with you more than anything physical. Yeah. Yeah. And now you want to. <laughs> Who everybody you want to be that big puncher? And mm-hmm. You want the knockout. Knockouts get you. Then the enemy calling you on the phone and talking to you, and you know. So it's like I want that. I want the Floyd. I want the. So I got the. Ah. And so now it's like okay, boom. So when that happened, let's get back to doing what we do. So no, so no matter what I say to him, he has to experience it. So that's what hard sparring and and I always think with that um, when when, when Haney fought the Nares. Hit with that punch. That was the best day of Haney's career. That adversity. 
See, he survived. That's what he yes, he survived it. He got through mm -hmm. it. He won. Clearly, he did a phenomenal job, but he's not perfect. And then from that, he learned so much things. Like four of his four of the early tough fights. Like the fighters gotta get gotta, gotta get challenged. Whether you do it as a coach inside the gym or they get challenged in the in real life fights. But you cannot coach from the outside and that guy develop. No, that guy, that fighter has to go through things. So mm -hmm. when it comes to the sparring, of course, you want to control as much as you can. You don't see anyone get hurt, whether it's yeah. your fighter or their fighter. Yeah. But there's no way you're going to sit down and I'm going to talk to you about boxing and you're going to learn how to be a world-class fighter from just drills. Mm. It's impossible. Yeah, you have to. You, you have to put it into practice in the sparring. You got to get in there. Yeah. You know, you got to see where you at, gauge yourself, and fix it. Yeah. And with the sparring, of course, you know, everyone you fight is different. You might have two people the same height and weight, but they have different temperaments. Um, so yes. it's, 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 yeah. that's, that's where you learn. Yeah, see, I got to, I got to, I got to, that's perfect. Bulletproof, like, he's short and natural, like six foot one, six foot in heavyweight. Bulletproof is a monster. Like, he is a, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he wants to snatch your heart out. You know what I'm saying? Man, Chuck is a more of a cool guy. But even yeah. outside the ring, they tip me the same way. Max mm -hmm. smile all day, chilling, you can't meet much. But in the proof is stone cold serious. He trains stone cold serious. Don't laugh when he play. When he try to train them by himself, people in the gym joke, he'll curse them out. Like, get the <laughs> hell away from me. I'm not playing. But that's who he is. He's not wrong for being. It's in that, in that focus. Yeah. Is that, that's yeah. what he needs to zone, you know, to focus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like people have to be, but some guys, like a fear might be laid back. He might be laid back, jovial, chilling, cool, but he's still working. But people are different, different temperament, personality, character. Yeah. It's like there's none, none better than the other. It's just with the coach, you try to find once you once you can understand your fighter, then you can kind of, you know, mm -hmm. he's not good on the inside. Yeah. You know, or uh, he's kind of too flat footed, or he may move too much. And you only learn for sparring. The, drill, the drills don't do it. The drills, uh, yeah. but. You have to see them. But everybody do the same drill, right? All my 10 guys. Now, all 10 of them do it in the ring, do something different in the ring. They're going to do something different. They're going to, they're going to, some may like to, you know what I'm saying? Counter too much. Some go for hard, right, chill, 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 box, box, box. Okay, okay, okay. Because they, 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 the, the character is mm. to be a go getter. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can, you can jump, but people are going to be who they are. And you're just trying to help them become better of themselves, basically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also, you know, you mentioned about a uh, match track when people started talking and, and then you started going looking for the, for the knockout punches. It's a, it's a fine line for these young boxers because um, it's, it's the media as well. Boxing also is, is the entertainment business. So yes. people, for people, if you want to put bums on seats, you got to knock people out. Uh, but in the same oh. way, in the same way, it's a sweet science. You, you can't go in there. Try and knock someone's head off because soon now someone you're gonna come across someone you can take your power the better you, your opponent over. becomes exactly yes uh, yeah. but it's that fine line you know when we i mean orange ward uh, may or may not be a good example a great boxer and he was great in pretty much every aspect of boxing but he wasn't a big puncher um yeah. and then you still see some people don't give him the respect he deserves yeah. uh, he's still he's still yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. but yeah but but but, but now great now, boxer now, one now, of the best of the 21st if he would have Listen to that stuff. It took a lot of big risks. He may have got caught. See what I said with the Haney Lenares fight. If look at that fight, he was he was beating Lenares. And, and it was like, okay, start stepping to him a little more. Start, start putting something on him. And that was that was his error. He started like, trying to make a point. Like let beat Lenares up. Lenares caught him. <laughs> now when he fought Cambosas, the same thing on his father said, no, do what we do. You see? Yeah. Keep it simple. You know what I'm saying? You, you dominated. You're doing phenomenal. Keep it up. Bump those haters. Bump mm -hmm. the critics. I'm trying to stop them. And you already went in 10, 11 zip. Just go ahead and let's finish and go home. Win the round. I'm not saying lay back. But you know, you don't have to uh, be risky. And that's what Floyd. Floyd probably could punch harder than what he really did. Mm -hmm. But he kind of, I don't want to fade throwing hard shots. I don't want to stay long in the stadium and get, get caught. I'd rather just yeah. do what I do, get away. I'm pretty sure Andre Ward probably punished him. Andre Ward just, I'm out for what? 
I'm winning, I'm dominating. I'm not going to try to be some exciting Gerald McClellan fighter just to just to prove something I had now brain dead. No, but it used to be um, a Roy Jones. He used to model himself a Roy Jones at the start. Roy Jones yeah. no, isn't excited, big punch, yeah. you know, speed athleticism. Uh, but he sort of changed himself, yeah. Yeah, from pullback yeah. for, the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the betterment of my career. You know what mm. I'm saying? And that's when people say, I retire, I'm young, nothing wrong with me, beautiful wife, kids, family, all my faculty, and I got, I got some money. Yeah. And Ward was strong. I mean, in, in the clinch, in the clinch, couldn't really beat him in the clinch. Yes. He could wrestle, he I, could throw you around. I, he could fight I believe you... the Andre Ward could punch, but I believe that, like when Derek James said, he, he said he told Errol Spence, don't hit Oogles with all that power. Hmm. He told him, just take some power off and beat him all night. And he still did the same thing. He still got him about it and bust his face up. To us, like, okay. The, the harder you punch, the more quickly you get tied. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, it's almost like the first man to get tied, gonna lose. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I say, I, I never felt this from war or nobody, so I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that, because some shots you see, he was sitting on some shots. He was sitting on it. Like the, the, the cold left shot, he yeah. sat on that right hand. But then the other day, he just he might just throw it. You know, he mm. might just, I'm, I'm getting on through because. What's the downside of being missing or me um, not knocking them out? The more I punch hard, the more I keep loading it up, loading up, loading up, I can run a million miles. You will get tired yeah. if you continue to throw hard punches. Yeah. Hagler so, Hearns. Exactly. Three See? rounds. Hearns was exhausted. <laughs> but, 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 and now get that fight, get, get that fight again with Hearns, no, he knew now. He may have outboxed my head. We don't know. Yeah. You see? So it's like they have to get that lesson mm. some kind of way in the ring. Yeah. No and matter it's, what the coach is. Yeah. But it's very tough um, because you're in the business of fighting. A lot of ego involved, you know, young, young men yeah. as well. A lot of ego yeah. involved. So it's very oh, easy yeah. to get dragged into a brawl. Um, coach too patient. Coach, coach tripping. Yeah. Coach really go out there and bust. Coach is too much skill. One day, one day, Tank's part of my gym, right? He's part of the, he's part of the guy. He 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 did, he did a nice like a, a slick move. So you let you let y'all stop that like the couple stuff. You like that couple stuff. I'm scared right there. Like he know that I'm a, you know, ah, like ah, whatever. But he know that I like the skill part. So it's like even to the farmer. I saw to the farmer spot up there in Philly. Mm-hmm. He did a real slick move. So he did. He said, "Couple stop. You see that? I know skills pay the bills." I'm like, oh. like they. So some I look at like in a positive way. But some of my guy look at it like he too technical. And which it can be true sometimes. But you got to be technical, man. You got to have skills, man. You or you want to have foundation. A, a short-lived career. Mm. You want to have a lengthy career. And, and, and like them guys, like uh, Archie and them guys. Them guys had to fight a hundred times before they had a title fight. Yeah. So they could spend their whole they, their whole bin on the first 100 fights. I'm trying to win, but be economical. Fury mm-hmm. is very economical. Look at him and Dylan White. Fury ain't do much at all to the Abuka hit him. It's over. He looked, he looked bland, you know, he stepped back, he throw a jab, he tie him up, he, he do some defensive moves. All of a sudden, boom, they drug mm-hmm. him down. You see? Yeah. Towards like um, battle of attrition. Who can last the longest? If I catch mm-hmm. you with something, you go down, that's fine. If you don't, I'm still going to outbox you. Either way, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to knock you out or I'm going to beat you on point. But I'm going yeah. to win. Yeah, the ring's the only place to be when you're tired and someone's trying to punch you in the face. <laughs> and, when, and, 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 and if you haven't prepared them as sparring, mm. they're not going to, they'll be a fish out of water. They're yeah. going to be panicking. They're going to be mm. looping and flailing and punches. And it's almost like, but if you have put them in, like I said, in sparring, when the guy get tired, don't let him out, don't let him out. Mm. Figure it out. Even when you're tired, sometimes I put put another put another, put another fresh guy in there when he get tired. It's like, damn, yeah. push crazy. Clinch. You throw the right hand. Get up under smuggle. Lock him up. Mm. Find a way because it, it happens in a real life fight. You want to know You're confidently. Like I'm good. Jared, that, way, that way he was so good in, in the ring. He spars so much times. So we're like, yeah. I'm good. I'm cool in any weather. You know what I'm saying? I, I know how to mm. 
I'm good. They can be tall. They can be short. They can be fat. They can be skinny. They can be softball, orthodox, um, big right hand, big left foot, big uppercut. I have seen so many different styles in the ring, not just because Bill Miller, you know what I'm saying? But I've experienced those things. I've seen those things in the ring. So I'm, I'm the second nature is cool. I'm mm-hmm. used to it already. Yeah. Exactly. The closest you'll get to fighting is is hard sparring, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, yeah. All right. So let's move on to just a handful of user questions. We've got some some of the guys on Instagram. Uh, so the first question was from a user called A Free First at Alpha. I'm assuming he asks, "What can you do to make up for having no speed?" Timing. Timing beats speed. If uh, punch with them. You know, mm. so some people try to like, uh, like you can't counter everything. The guy naturally faster than you. Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, same thing. Perfect example. You see, early Roy was woo, it was crazy. Just beat Bernard. Bernard started just trust whatever he does. He jab, you jab. His right hand, your right hand. You know what I'm saying? Timing beats speed. You can kind of get a timing on it, and you can kind of, you can, you, you can kind of. Um, I would say you can outspeed them, but you can more or less. Uh, you can sort of take the speed away from them by yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, cramping them. Yeah. yeah, see when it's coming, you can adjust to it. And you can get your shots in between it. Yeah, once you can, you know, you can get somebody in time. In. That's that's a lot of world class guys are real. Like Canelo and Mekon. Mm. A lot of folks may say that Mekon was winning that fight. And he had success. Well, he he was, but Canelo knew he'd catch up to him. Canelo he, was timing. He, he Biden his time, yeah. Uh, Kale Brook and uh, Terrence Crawford, and I was I was I was with Roy while we watching the fight. And Roy kept Roy Jones kept telling me Crawford gonna smash Kale. <laughs> I kept saying, you know, don't sleep on Kale Brook. I like Kale Brook. I'm thinking, you know, Kale Brook gonna do his thing. So first two rounds, Kale doing good. You know, Kale pulled, jabbing, jabbing. I'm like, you see Roy? You see Roy? You see Roy? Roy like Muslim. He just figuring them out. <laughs> <laughs> Mayweather Judah is another good example as well. Judah was uh, quicker than Mayweather, course, but Mayweather broke him down. And the same thing happened when he, when he caught him. It was like, oh, you know, it was not saying that Crow would give him the round, but Crawford was just trying to, you know, get a read on on, on, on Kelvin. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. that's a quality fighter. You know what I'm saying? So timing, you can it's, you can kind of. Get, it's very interesting you mentioned um, Kelvin Terence Crawford because after the fight, Kelvin was interviewed. Um, at ringside, and he mentioned uh, that British fighters are at a bit of disadvantage compared to the American counterparts because he basically recommended the American style of coaching. Uh, so, this, so that was a very interesting comment by Kelbrook. He said that the American guys they're taught more against more styles, basically. So they they they've seen it all before, which is kind of went. I don't remember exactly word for what he was saying, but I do I do I do, I do recall Kelbrook saying that about the, um, the American style of boxing was was just. Was just better. <laughs> it's an interesting yeah. comment coming from Kel Brook, who's a world champion, one of our world I, champions. I, I would say, I would say, you kind of that. That's partly true, because uh, just look at the top ten list all time. This what? Yeah, eight, probably eight Americans. You probably get in there at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and they they can fight every range. Like Shakur, Shakur can fight outside really good. Shakur mm. is also very, very, very comfortable on the inside. You see, you don't barely see that from people. Since said uh, the guy from uh, another country, I'm gonna say, well, predominantly they may be they may be real good on the outside. Say, say Cubans are the best footwork in boxes, right? But not a lot of Cubans are very good on the inside. You see, so I can see him saying, "Oh, somebody's a very good uh, front foot forward fighter," but it may be good on the outside as well. You know what I'm saying? Maybe may, may, may only good at going forward. So I can see that where it's like you have to. Okay, you go on the outside already. Devin Haney, Cam Moses, sliding up under the right hand, smothering it. Mm. That's effective inside clinch work. You see? Yeah. But he is very good on the outside as well. Andre Ward, very good boxer. Andre Ward is very good on the inside as well. Well, you know who can do both from the, from the UK? That Fury, man. Yeah. I had a guy who, um, they fought for the third fight. He was in camp with Fury for a few weeks. I see him on was in camp with Wilder for a few weeks. So Wilder fought. When they fought, he made a post saying, you know, Team Bronze Mama. Mm-hmm. So I am like, man, 
did Wally really get that good with uh, Malik? Malik's my man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? You know, American guy, boom, boom, boom. So he like, LOL, Fury gonna smash him, right? So I'm like, dang, when you say that? He like, I just said Wally because, you know, America, you know, so Rock on the Dog, you know what I'm saying? He's a man. Then we said to me, he said, Fury's inside game is unmatched. Mm. Now, we might say, yeah, he's 6'9", he can do this, do that. I'll study Fury. Fury's inside game is just as good, if not better, than his own outside. Fury know how to control your arms, your wrist, your elbow. He know how to mm. clench and punch. He know, he know how to tie you up, lean on you. That's a skill. It's not just dirty tactics. No, no, no. no. That, that, that's, that's, a, that's a real true skill to be able to fight, you know. Not only six foot nine, what, what would he do if somebody got inside, you know, on the box? Mm. On the inside. Somebody eventually get inside, but I'm cool, whatever. You want to get inside, you there too. I'll beat yeah. you out. If you get in range, I'll beat you inside as well. Mm. I'll beat you in every range of boxing. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, Fury few, few has got so many skills, um, yeah. especially for a big man. He's, he's a, <laughs> amazing. Ray Bull like, like, was a tall guy, but Ray Bull was on the inside. Very, very, yeah. very you don't mm. see that too often, but some guys, you know, they were taught, you know, and Crawford, one of them guys, too, Crawford could fight in any, yeah. you know, you know, so I can see what Carol Brooks saying that, you know, that you see my brother, too, that the guys can do, you know, be forced to. The sparring is hard, you know, I can see them, you know, I got a guy who's six foot one, fight at 122. Six, six foot one, 122, wow. Yeah, and he, he probably make it for another, he, he, he not blowing up, like he, he's good, but he can't fight on the inside. I, I work with God, I know that somebody, one of the rough and tough Mexicans will get right inside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I don't want them to feel like out of place. So we mm-hmm. work on that. Like, if, if, and when, yes, you want to keep money outside. That's the ultimate goal outside, work, do your thing. But if that happens, we have, a, we can we can be comfortable in any, 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 any scenario. Yeah. You know, back truck, I try to team the fight outside as well. So I'm like, dang, because. Montel Graham was five foot seven. Montel could outbox from the outside anyone. Carl Friends was five foot four. He was a very good boxer. Mm-hmm. Friends was not a brawler. He could move, he could jab, pop, faint, do all the things at you. So I tried to match up that you could do it all. You know what I'm saying? You control the pace from the outside. You don't have to get inside and try to be a Mike Tyson. That's how you really blow your load. Like, mm-hmm. So you know, being versatile, being able to do it all. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the Kwon coaches, I uh, may, may have been Stacey McKinley or Jesse Robertson, um, they mentioned there were so many good coaches in Kwon that their fighters had seen it all. They knew everything, yes. how to fight on the outside, the inside, how to clinch. Yes. And that's why I they agree. were so good in, in, that, in yeah. that time frame. And, and, yeah. and that's what the mid work. Like now, everyone just teaches me. I, I watch, I watch guys, I said, that's all you're going to do. You're going to come in the gym, you're going to do a strength workout, right? Then you're going to shadow box four rounds, hit the mid spot 10 rounds. Hit the bag and go home. It's like, what the world? You know, but now nah, look at a guy like uh J Rock. It's phenomenal on the inside. That come from the culture. You see? Tony Harrison, man, those guys can fight, man. There was no way he learned that hitting the mitts. Mm. Someone, their coaches sat, got in front of them. And show them things. They coach watch film with them and probably taught them over and over so they understood what it was, you know. So that's you know what I'm saying. Not saying you're gonna be undefeated or you're gonna, but you have more, you have more chances to be successful if you have a full tool set. Then you are just an athletic person, a fighter. You no, know, the teacher is in the crunk gym, those types of have guys that would. There's a video got of an old man named uh, Luther Bird just training the guy. Oh, Luther yeah. standing there, the yeah. guy's doing mid work, and he's talking to him. That's what I do a lot. I'm going to talk to you and say, well, you know, do this, do that. This scenario, do this, do that. Walk, keep your chin down. Stay here, stay there. Boom, boom, boom. Like, that's yeah. how you develop. Yeah, you know? Luther Bird, just for, for anyone who doesn't know from guys maybe listening, um, one of Eddie Fudge's um, guys, wasn't yes. it? Eddie yes, Fudge told him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that video, and yeah, I mean, he must have been dropping so much knowledge, but 
If you yeah. Know, that's me. Yeah, you clearly care that way. Right? Yeah. yeah. But ain't no mental on his hand. He ain't doing a lot. He yeah. just talking. You know exactly. Yeah. Um, so another user, um, Hussam Sadi, he asks, how do you approach film study? I take like a, like right now I'm on, I'm, I'm on a um, Duran type of the whole, the whole year. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I go to Box Red, for example. I look up the Van Ver Sugar Ray Leonard, for example. All right. After Ray Leonard, who the next five guys is for? See? Probably no names. And then I watch those fights. They're on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You and you watch them. And you, and you get glimpses of things. And you start like, I take notes. You know what I'm saying? I screenshot, record. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got another iPad. I just got all my, uh, like, phew. I got some like a video library and stuff that I've seen Duran do. Mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? You start, and you start building a type of, like these, like these were some of his signature moves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I, that's how I do it. Metro be like, Coach, how you find this stuff like Metro? Watch the films, man. Not mm -hmm. just the big fights. Not just the five huge fights. People know Fury for a while. Mm -hmm. That dude got a whole catalog, man, of meeting people in, in different ways, man. Yeah. Like, it's more than just that. So that's how I do it. And I start to, uh, like, flow it. I watch him versus Shane, man. I woke 10 times already. Yeah, he's one of my favorite you know fights. Yeah. yeah. Can you see how Shane did what he did? So it adjusted, still was confident. That's going to have months. A coach had to have a fighter to his confidence. The fighter has to have balls of, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. if I get caught, I am not going to bail out. I'm not going yeah. to check out, quit the game plan. I'm just going to. Errol Spence killed Brooks, man. Mm. He kept telling Earl to throw the jab. And Kel was counting that jab like, Kel was eating that jab up, man. Derrick James said, kept keep jab. I'm like, damn, it's crazy. That jab broke, Kel broke up, man. Yeah. And the body shots. So it's like, you start to learn, like, what makes Earl that good? You know, you look at it and, 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 and you, and you uh, kind of like build, like you're trying to think what they're thinking, what they're used to. Because you watched them so many times that it's almost like you know what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how that's how I just that's, they got a thing where you can make you can make it slow mo. Yes, uh, YouTube, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I just learned that, I just learned that too, so I slow mo it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, look at a different thing. I love Mike McCallum as well. So Mike yeah. McCallum, yeah, yeah. great fighter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but yeah, by end of his career, watching Floyd fight, it was literally like watching a book of boxing encyclopedia he, he was yes. that good uh, he that had skilled, it all i everything. know some hate him some hate him some say they want to say you know um but he's he he's one fighter probably one of the only ones that i can truly say that i believe could have lasted and done well in any single era for me would have been under he, he had a real true life full tool set mm. I'm not a bandwagon. I'm not a. I don't know him. He ain't giving nobody to say this. To my, not because he black. I hope, he, I hope he gives him much for wearing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about straight up and down, watching him in the ring, yeah. not out the ring. Whatever he did, I, you, don't, you don't know him. Hmm. Yeah. Inside that square circle, purely as a fighter, he's there's Man. no denying the talent he, he had. Is. He, yeah, the skill he, he had. The he had a chin as well. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned. Yeah, he mentioned about the, the punching power. As Pretty Boy Floyd, he was he was a a, a, yeah. a, a good puncher. But when yeah. he went up in weight, he didn't they didn't serve his purpose to go brawling with guys who were naturally bigger than him. No. At now think about something. So defense. Think about Tony and Floyd, right? And if you say who had a better shoulder roll, most will probably say who knows say Tony, mm. right? Is probably true. Okay, but did Tony have the feet like Floyd had? No. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it was like Floyd had a little bit of everything. He was he had a lead right hand. You don't see that that much. I mean, like with fast as a jab, he had a lead left hook. Yeah. Like it was, he had so many tools that it's hard to really say that I could put someone above him. You know what I'm saying? It, it, for me, it is. You know, um, 
I have not, you know, people saw Ray Robinson, you know, them guys are my guys. So I'm not gonna say he's better than them guys, mm-hmm. you know. But if you would put Floyd in that era where there was no money involved, and he had to do what he had to do, because Floyd got a chin too. Mm-hmm. Like he don't mind biting down. Look at me down to Floyd, the first time. Mm. His father never said move in the ropes in the first round. I mean, Donald Rush Floyd. Big Floyd never said Floyd get out of there. He said, Floyd, go under that and go to the body. Mm. So what if somebody would have jumped on Floyd, Aaron, whatever, uh, um, Carm Basilio or somebody like right there, a real rough ride, Gene Foreman. Do I think Floyd would have ran? No. He put him, he would have, he could fight inside too. He yeah, could stay he, right there, pop, boom, boom, you know. He would have competed run. in every era. In any era. I don't think about yeah. would, 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 would just blew him out of the water. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if we think that, a lot of that because it's hate or think because, you know, but I believe that he is one that, um, man, it's hard to, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I say he won't lose. No, it's what I'm saying for. Everyone loses. But yeah. if, if, if you put a forward against anybody, and said best out of five. Man, come on, man. <laughs> I don't know who could be Floyd more time than Floyd to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like he and he was very smart with it too. Like he had everything. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a real full and he had phenomenal coaching with him. With the work ethic, with the chin, with the man, come on, man. And uh, you know? Floyd Mower was also a very diligent. Um, at studying film. So you mentioned the lead right, for example. I mean, he was studying guys like Ali, for example, through the lead right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that he, he used to have that uh, body jab, which he would turn into a, into a hook. Yes, a hook, Roy, yes. Roy, Roy Jones used to do that, as our Charles used to do that. So Floyd was so studying all these guys. He learned from those guys. I yeah. got a partner of mine who, who really, really cool, Floyd. He said, man, you know, Floyd, y'all, y'all, y'all feel good. I'm like, why you say that? He said, man, because, yo, if you want to give Floyd to talk, just talk boxing. That's mm-hmm. all you got to do. It's just, not that I meant, like, Nate, my, my dude, Nate Campbell, my guy. Nate, me, and, me and they always talk. Me and Arnold Andrew come me and Winnie Bottom guys. All you got to do, don't just talk about boxing. And you will see them guys light up. It's because it's what they do. Mm-hmm. It's what they've done for so many years. Like, that's what he is. He is the epitome of that. Like, man, the jokers are smart, man. Very, very, mm-hmm. very here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they had desire to be great. So they 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 train so much more than just their physical. They're gonna sit down, take a nap with boxing on TV, and they watch it. They learn, they're picking up different, yeah, different things. You know what I'm saying? Very yeah, smart. Exactly. Yeah. Um, a user called Boston KB. So he's talking about the so he's a southpaw. And he started using the cross guard. So he's asking for advice as a southpaw using the cross guard. Azuma Nelson, Pernell, what a guy. Mm. Real good example. And Azuma Nelson was purely cross block. He did yeah. well. He lost, yeah. but he did well. He did very good. Mm. Study that fight, brother. Yeah, Pernell, which is a good one to study because he, he was a southpaw as well. Yeah. Um, and trained by Georgie Benton. So you'll see a lot of these techniques come into play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good one to study. Uh, Paul uh-huh. Spadafor as well, who was trained by Man. Tom Yankello. Very, and, uh, very, very underrated fighter. Yeah. He's a real good dude too. You probably did him. Spadafor I respond to you. He down to earth, mm. humble. With the BK guy, tell him hit, tell him DM. He got he got IG as well. DM yes. Paul Spadafor. Yeah. He probably respond to you he's, because he's really uh mm. like he ain't no bougie kind of guy. He chilling. He's humble and he don't mind. Uh, he respects boxing. He, he loves boxing. Game, give game, take game back. Yeah, he's a good one. Yeah, he's a good one to study because if, you, if you've seen um, Paul Spider for US defense, there's that high elbow which we've spoken about in the past that's coming out with that um, cross blocking. So he's a very good one to um, to watch yes. as well. So, and of course, Pinel Whitaker was um, a big influence yeah. on um, Paul Spider yeah. for his career. Okay, um, I think that that about wraps it up, Mustafa. I mean, it's, it's okay. been it's, it's been um, it's been a great speaking to you. Um, uh, again, thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to, to, to come on to this video podcast. I mean, it's, it's been over an hour and a half. I didn't even notice. Um, no, it's, me uh, either. It's, it's, it's time, <laughs> time, time's been flying. I, I think we, know, we could probably do this for another hour or two quite easily. For sure. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been great uh, seeing, seeing you. Great speaking to you. Likewise, um, brother.
all, all the best with everything. And um, of course, we'll keep in touch as well on Instagram. And uh, I'm sure in future you'll, you'll be back on as well. I'd love to. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, love. yeah. We've got a few fans in my gym as well for um, yourself and Mac Chuck as well. So I thought I'd just, you know, slip that in there as well. Yeah, yeah Lord, love yeah. here in Watford. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, keep working hard. Yeah, you too. Good to see you. All the best. Yes, Take care. Thank yes, you. Salam alaikum. Waikum salam.